Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you about my favorite IDE for Python development and uh, coding, and I'm going over why this is my favorite and kind of showing you a quick glimpse of what this can do. So pretty much an IDE is an integrated development environment, and it's a little bit more advanced than a basic text editor, as it has a lot of tools that can help you when coding, and it saves you a lot of time and makes things a lot easier to organize and just to look at in general. So a lot of you might notice that I typically code in the standard IDLE. Um, it looks something like this. We have like a blank file. There's nothing special. There's no real tools. Like we have this format tool. That's about it. Um, this IDE is way better. Uh, it's called PyCharm, and I'm going to be telling you why. So the reason I haven't since now been using PyCharm for a lot of my videos is because I wanted to test it out and make sure that it really was my favorite and it was good before I introduced it to you guys. So I can say now after using it for a few months that um, I'm pretty comfortable with it and it's much, much better than IDLE, uh, the basic Python text editor. So this is what's going to look what it's going to look like when you download and uh, open up PyCharm for the first time. So you can go to this download page, which I'm going to leave in the description down below, and just download this community version. It's completely free, and it has all of the features you're going to need. There's not much you need. Uh, there's not much in the professional version that will really make it that much better experience. This is more if you're working with a large team. Uh, community works better for uh, I don't know individuals. So it's going to look something like this. You can either open a project or create a new project. In this case, I'm going to open a project, just a typical Python project. Um, so pretty much, I'm going to just going to go to desktop and just find one on here. Python, let's just open up uh, machine learning, for example. Okay, so I'll open up this one. And you can see it starts loading us up into a project. And already it's giving us tips on cool keybinds and things that we can use uh, in uh, PyCharm. So that's the name of this IDE. And the way this works is it's project based. So a project is just pretty much any folder. Uh, and then if it has any Python files within it, all of those are gonna be to the same project. So you can have multiple folders within a project and you can create your own projects. You can open existing projects uh, and they all have their own settings that you can save within them, which makes it really useful. So let's just go through kind of the ID he IDE here, the basic stuff. So there's a project tab. This is what's gonna show you all of your basic files, all the thing that's in the working directory. You have all your files up here. So whenever I wanna open a new file, so I wanna open, which one I don't have open, neural networks. If I just double click on that, it'll just open up in this tabbed view. Um, and then I can flip between all these files, which already makes it really useful if you're working on multiple files or you wanna copy and paste things, you don't have to be moving them around your screen. You can also split um, things horizontally and vertically. So if I left click on this or right click on it and click split vertically, you can see it shows up on the right here. You can do the same thing with horizontally. So it goes downwards like that. Um, and yeah, they also have this really cool structure tab, which I just recently found out about actually. I know I've been using it for a while, but if you click structure, it's actually gonna show you the entire structure of your code. So I'll make this bigger. And you can see that it goes through my class of so this pixel class, which I have open here. And it shows me all of the methods that I have, um, all of the variables, the attributes, and all of those uh, cool things, which is really useful. So if you have long or big files um, and you want to quickly find something, for example, I want to find my grid class. I can just click on the grid class here on structure. It'll bring me right to it. And then it lists off, again, all of the methods that I've made and some of the properties that this has. So like len, pixels, whatever, um, you can go through that. It also has variables and functions. So guess uh, like this is a function. Main is a function, brings me to that. And then these are just my global variables that I have Define and when I click it, it brings me right to it. So speaking of global variables, um, there's a really cool thing that PyCharm does, and it's called refactoring or refractoring, something like that. I excuse the thing, but anyways, if I click on a variable, so highlight it, and I right click and I click refactor, that's what it is, refactor, and then I click rename. I can change this to, for example, width like that. Click refactor. And now it actually changes all of the other variables. So you saw I had a W here. It changes that to width, changes this one to width. Same thing I could show you if I do it with height and go refactor, rename. So changing H to height like that. Then it will change all of the variables within my uh, file here that are named that same thing. So this makes it a lot easier if you need to change a variable name, which you will have to do a lot in Python um, to be able to do that. Okay, so next thing I guess to show um, is just running the file. So a lot of people when you download PyCharm are kind of confused on how running files works. So the way it works in PyCharm is your uh, 
what do you call it? Your project has configurations and they're up here where this says draw number here. Yours would just say edit configurations or add new configuration to run your files. Um, this is a bit complicated, but it's really useful once you learn how to do it. You just click edit configurations or add new. And then up here in this top left hand corner, you can click plus um, select Python as your what your interpreter. And then you're going to give a name to your configuration. And this is what you're going to select. Um, what is it when you want to run a certain file? So you want to name it appropriately to the file you're going to run. For example, in this project, I have multiple Python files that I could run. So if I wanted to run neural networks, I would want to name this one neural oops, networks like this so that I know which one I'm clicking to run. So then you're going to go do script path, um, click this little folder icon here, and you can simply just find that Python file and it, you can run files from this configuration that aren't within the project, which is really nice too. So I'm going to click neural networks and then I can also select my Python interpreter. A lot of you are probably just going to have a default like Python 3.7, but you can see that I actually have um, many different interpreters. These are because I have Conda um, interpreter as well. So I'm just going to select Python 3.7 as my main one and then click apply and OK. So now if I wanted to run neural networks, I could simply click this run icon here and I'm actually just going to run main. So I'll run main and you can see that it pops up a thing here. Uh, just wait a second. It's going to open up a uh, pi game window in one minute, I believe. And yeah, so it's going through all this, whatever. And then I can click stop to stop the program at any time that I want. So there's also a few things down here. So we have run. This is obviously what happens whenever you're running your program and you can run multiple instances of programs at once. So you can see if I ran a different file. So if I run like draw number, then another one will come up here and you can close out of them and delete them as you like. There's a terminal and this is pretty much like your CMD. So if you want to install packages or do stuff like that, you can do that right from PyCharm. And there's a standard Python console. So if I run this and I type like, I don't know, X equals four and I type X, it just works like a basic Python console, which is really useful. You don't have to leave this if you just want to test out what a certain command in Python is going to do without actually running the whole program and going through all of that. Now, this has really just been some of the basics of PyCharm. If you'd like me to do a full tutorial going through a lot of the different things that PyCharm can do, then I'm more than happy to do that. But I need you guys to let me know that in the comments down below. Anyways, I highly recommend you guys download and install PyCharm. The only downfall to it is it uses a bit more memory than IDLE. That being said, it still doesn't use that much. I think for me, it uses maybe like 700, 800 megabytes of RAM, which is not that much, but it's a lot more than IDLE does. Anyways, that has been it for this video. Go download PyCharm in the link below. This will definitely save you a lot of time when programming. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in another one.